Okay, in this video, I would like to show everyone how Ed Lead Scanlon's flywheel at Coral Castle is producing magneto dielectricity just like the Earth is. So let's get started. At Coral Castle, Ed Lead Scanlon has taken the entire electrical charging system out of a Model T Ford and placed it in the castle. Here you see my hands on the V magnets at Coral Castle. What Ed's got set up is the same setup that the car has set up. In the Model T Ford, there's 16 of these V magnets in the flywheel. But what Ed has set up, he's taken and stacked five of them high and encased them in concrete and then placed the magneto ring around there. In the center, Ed's got a, a handle with a crank on it, so you can just crank it. And it will start spinning the magnets past coils that he would have placed right here. So this is how Ed's producing his AC. He's got the Model T Ford V magnets, which have a positive, ne neutral, negative, and when these are passing the coil, they're producing AC, alternating the current. So, like I said, Ed made this thing to model just after the Earth and to model after an atom because it's going from the subatomic to the macro, from the micro to the macro. So it's working like this. Okay, the earth rotates at 15 degrees per hour. Just like Ed's got his V magnet set up at 15 degree spacing around the 360 degree wheel. Okay, so when you you have 24 hours in a day. So when you take your 24 hours and you divide it by 15, you get another one of Ed's sweet 16s, 1 1.6. Real close to 1.618, the Fibonacci. So this is how Ed's working this whole thing. Like I said, he's using counter space or zero point or the nine at the center. Because Everything is vectoring back to that nine. Everything is draining into counter space. The lowest pressure point. So what Ed's doing is setting up this condition here. He's setting up his wheel to do the same exact thing that the Earth does while it's spinning and traveling through the solar system. Earth has a molten iron core at the center. When it's spinning through the ether, it produces exactly the same thing that Ed's wheel is producing. It produces its magnetosphere, which is its shield. So when you spin Ed's wheel up, He's running this AC cycle. Now, this is what you need to consider, and this is probably the most important equation that there is. This equation was given to George Van Tassel at his landing strip in California by an ET who landed his craft there and taught this to George. George is the builder of the Integratron. F equals 1 over T. Frequency equals 1 over time. Everything in the universe is simple. This is simple. This gets right to the point. What it's telling you is in 3D space or magnetism or visible light, you always have to factor in time because everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end when you're in matter. So this is all dealing with matter. So when you're dealing with matter, you're always dealing with time. And this comes into all the electrical equations. 
So what Ed's working off of is this right here. The 2.72 or the megalithic yard. What it's doing is showing you the vector in a triangle. The shape of perfect incommensurability. It's showing you this right angle relationship actually between the earth and the moon. The 1.272 to 1 ratio. See, here's your setup. That's how it bisects. So, Ed's using this whole right angle relationship between the earth and the moon. So, this is a very important factor in this whole thing, and it all makes sense further on that I go. So, Ed's flywheel is working like this. He's got those V-magnets, and the V-magnets would be mounted to the flywheel, spinning, and while it's being spun, it's passing a plate that has 16 iron cores wrapped in copper around it. Okay, so it's spinning past the iron cores to produce electricity. This is how the magneto uh, charging system works on a Ford Model T. You got your magneto ring that's fixed to the block and then you have your V magnets passing the cores. Uh, the magnetic field is inducing the current through the coil ring up to the magneto post. Okay, so what Ed's doing Here's his setup. Here's his magneto post. Here's his major right angle. Now what Ed's actually doing is this whole thing with the hydrogen. Because hydrogen is the key to everything. We're not carbon based. We're hydrogen based. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. This is what I'm talking about. Ed's a genius. When you actually go on Wikipedia, they actually tell you something very, very neat. When you look up the word dielectric in Wikipedia, it says dielectric polarization, orientation polarization, or distortion polarization. Okay? Orientation is at the 104, 90, excuse me, 104. 0.45 degree angle between asymmetric bonds between the oxygen molecule and the hydrogen and the water molecule. This is very important because this is what the wheel is showing you. Where I, if you go into my previous videos, I have this all laid out. Where this relationship with the 105, here they're calling it 104.45. Uh, but you call it 105. 105.95, this right angle relationship. It's what I'm showing you with the earth and the moon. So here it would be your 9 o'clock on a clock. Here would be your 3 o'clock on a clock. And down the center would be your 6 o'clock. Positive, negative, neutral. 369. So he's working right at the subatomic base. Because all matter is just subatomic hydrogen bound together by magnetism. That's how this whole thing is working. Don't be fooled by anything else. This can be showed very simply. So when Ed is doing this right angle setup here with the um, post here and the wheel with the right angle relationship, it's the same relationship that I'm showing you here, the same setup with my right angle on my maglev pencil. And when it's set up like this, you get your effect where everything, all the pressure is now on this point. Everything is right here. This is your axle. So if you set it up like this and flip it, it's showing you the same exact thing in his wheel. Here he's showing you the axle. 
with that point right there. That's your zero G. That's your dielectric center. That's your counter space. That's your nine. Where everything is Ving or vectoring back to. The nine in counter space. That's the controller of the cause. That's how this whole thing is operating. Is through counter space. Counter space is a zero. There's no frequency in counter space. Just like in DC. In DC current, there is zero. There's, there's no frequency there. DC only goes forward in time. What I'm going to show you here is how my magnetic wheel functions just like Ed's wheel. Ed's wheel would have his magnets placed like this. So Ed would have positive, neutral, negative. And that would run past the coil that he would have set up, just like I have this coil from a microwave oven transformer set up here. I have now put small neodymium magnets on the outside of my MT drive wheel. So these are only running one way. So the effect here you're going to see is only going to be DC. It's not going to be AC. I'm just doing this for purpose of demonstration. To show you how he's just got this set up. Okay, so... Of course, when you spin the wheel, you're going to see the magnets generating the electricity through the coil. making current. DC current. Okay, so in DC, the current only goes one way, forward in time. And there's no wave. It's zero. Like a zero point, like counter space. Okay, so when you slow down the wheel, stop, everything stops. The whole system shuts down. The whole thing is to get to the zero point or to get to counter space. Because when you get to counter space, there's a lot of energy there. Because that's your vacuum. And that's what this whole thing is working off of. In the next video, I'm going to go more over how this whole thing is put together and how Ed has set this up to do some pretty incredible things. Ed is basically doing the Philadelphia experiment and the Hutchinson effect all in one. There's a lot of components to this and it's going to get kind of technical. So the videos might be a little bit shorter um, so I can organize everything. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.